Hey everybody, and welcome to part 14 of the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course. Hopefully you were able to knock out your lens corrections, your laser timing, and your red light pointer adjustments. I, I know those are complicated videos, but you should be on the other side of them at this point. And also, it's official. Lightburn for Galvo has been released in its open beta form, so you guys are starting to watch and use these tutorials now, and one of the most common questions I've seen since release has been how to manage your library, how to import it from EasyCAD and manage it once it's in Lightburn. So we're gonna talk about library management today. To get started, just a couple things right off the bat. I do have my EasyCAD folder on my desktop here and uh, we're gonna be needing the markparam.lib file inside of our param folder. Uh, so that is there. We also have the most recent version of Lightburn installed, 1.2 and we're gonna need another tool. So you're gonna actually come to this link. I've got it down in the description for you. It's a GitHub page, github.com slash shark92651 slash laserprams converter. Uh, I, I do have this link down in the description so you can click it. It used to be to download this settings converter that you had to click code and download from here, but now this actually downloads the actual code for the program. So what we wanna do is scroll down and over here we'll see releases and release 1.0.7 is the latest. So we'll go ahead and click that. And we're gonna click the laser params converter 1.0.7 zip file. So clicking that is gonna download the converter to our computer. We can click the arrow here and click show in folder so that we can see where it is. It's on our downloads folder, that's fine for now. We're gonna right click and extract all, and we're gonna extract it because it is in a zip folder, and that opens up this folder that actually has the converter in it. We're gonna take this and cut it, and we're gonna come over and paste it onto the desktop just so that we can keep things all together, and then we can close these windows and kind of carry on. So here's the installation folder for the laser params converter, our EasyCAD folder, and our Lightburn shortcut. From here, we'll have to install this piece of software. So if we come in and we click setup.exe, that's going to run the setup for us. There is a readme and a getting started guide if you need a little more information on how the converter works. But for this video, we're just gonna go ahead and run the setup. This is made by a solo developer. He's put a ton of time into this and he's not charging anything for the software. So he hasn't paid to get Microsoft's signature on the software, essentially. Uh, so you will get this Windows protected your PC warning here. I'm perfectly comfortable running the software on my machine, but when downloading programs from the internet, there's always an inherent risk. So I just figured I'd warn you about that now since we're sitting here. But in order to bypass this, we're just gonna click more info and click run anyway. It's gonna go ahead and run the installer. So we can hit next and just select where we want it to install. And we're just basically clicking next through this installation, guys. It's gonna go ahead and install that for us right there. And once it's done, we can click close to exit and close. And we're done with the install folder, so we can delete that. And there it is, our laser params converter is up and running. So we're gonna use this software to convert our existing EasyCAD library so that it can be used inside Lightburn. To get started with this, we'll just double click the laser params converter. And here we've got a couple different things going on. So this is the format that we're importing up here. So we're importing an EasyCAD 2 library and we are using this for a fiber laser. This max power over here is the maximum amount of power you want the software to be allowed to set. So uh, for fiber laser, it's okay to run your laser at 100% power. If we choose CO2 gantry, you'll see the max drops down to 90 because it's not really good for CO2 glass tubes to be run at 100% power. So you can set that value however you like, but for fiber lasers, max power of 100 is just fine. Next up, we're gonna choose our file. So this is where we need to import our EasyCAD parameter library. If we click the three dots, it's gonna pull up our Windows Explorer here, and we can just go to the desktop, EasyCAD folder, param, and we have our markparam.lib file. We can go ahead and hit open there, and that's gonna load up our parameters. So you can see they come right in. Now, in order for this software to work correctly, it needs to know what lens this library was developed for and what wattage machine this library was developed for. Uh, this is my library from my 30 watt Mactron and my 110 lens. So with those in mind, we can go ahead and get these converted. If you have your own personal library uh, with a different lens and a different wattage, you'll wanna make sure you set those here. 
Over here, we have a couple options. We can change the lens and wattage if we want. So if we're converting from one machine to another, you could change the lens and wattage. Or if we're just converting formats, which is what we're doing here, we can keep those the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that to 110 on the lens and 30 on the wattage. And then we're gonna hit convert all. You'll notice since our lens and wattage aren't changing, our power and speed settings aren't changing. Everything's identical. All we're using this for at the moment is outputting a light burn file so that we can use this with our light burn installation. So we can go ahead and click save parameters file and drop this down. And we're just gonna select light burn cut library from the options. And we'll save that again to the desktop just to make sure we're keeping everything organized. We don't want anything wandering off on us. And we'll hit save and it'll say parameter file saved and we'll hit okay. And there we go. We have our mark param.clb. That's a light burn file. And we're all done with the converter for now. We can go ahead and close that. And now we know where our mark param library file is. So, you know, typically I wouldn't leave this on the desktop. I'd probably tuck this on like Google Drive somewhere or in a folder where you're not going to lose it, something related to your light burn installation, but just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to leave that on the desktop and we'll go ahead and launch Lightburn. Once Lightburn's open, we're gonna come down here to the library tab and we're gonna load in our file from EasyCAD. Now, don't worry, we're gonna talk about how to use the library tab in a little more detail after this, but for now, we just wanna get our EasyCAD library in. So we're gonna hit load and we're going to go back to the desktop where we know our CLB file is and we're gonna select it and hit open and you can see our settings have come in from EasyCAD. Uh, they're there. It's a little bit of a weird organization, but if we draw our circle, say, and we pick our aluminum dark setting, we can assign that to the layer, and they do, in fact, come over. So this all works really, really well, but there's a small problem. The way EasyCAD organizes its parameter libraries, it's basically just a straight list. Lightburn uses this hierarchy system and nests things in titles and descriptions. So in order to clean this up, we're gonna have to do a little bit of extra work to get things looking nice and working correctly. Every setting has a material, a title, and a description. And by manipulating these, we can clean our library up to make it look a little bit better. We're gonna do that with the edit description button over here on the right. So with the default, we can hit edit description material name. We could just say any or default. Doesn't really matter what you put there. Title would be default and description would be default. This is just that default setting for your fiber laser, right guys? And we'll hit okay. Uh, so there's the default setting and that's kind of how those three things will show up in the list. Now, if we have multiple settings for one material, this is where Lightburn gets really handy. So for the aluminum dark setting, we're going to click the description. Again, this is the actual setting and we're going to click edit description. But this time we're going to give the material name of aluminum. For title, we could put something like ablate. And then for the description, we can put dark and we'll go ahead and hit OK. And now we have this aluminum material up here, uh, which is really nice. And we have our aluminum general as well. So if we click description on this one and edit description, again, we want to write aluminum and we wanna make sure this is spelled exactly the same way, including capitals as the material we used for aluminum earlier so that they show up under the same tree. Under title, we can put ablate uh, because we're ablating with this. And then description, we could put general, right? And we'll hit okay. And now under aluminum, we have aluminum, ablate, dark, and general, and they show up in the same tree. So if you have something like steel here, you could have ablation settings and annealing settings. You could have cut settings. Uh, there's a whole world of different ways you can organize this library. We'll do the last one here, the PMAG, just to say that we did them all. So we'll go ahead and collapse these under aluminum and we can edit the description here and we can do PMAG tan. Uh, in fact, we'll just, the material's PMAG, right? And then we can say tan down here and tan. And we'll hit OK. And now we've got PMAG and we have tan settings. And in that tan settings, we have the actual tan parameters. So um, a great way to organize your library and get it over from EasyCAD. So you're, this is your EasyCAD library. We've ported it over and it's good to go. 
if we want to create some new settings in Lightburn, we have to learn how this library tab works. And we can talk about that just a little bit real quick before we move on. So we've got our circle over here and we're experimenting with some new settings. We double click in the layers panel like we have been when we're trying to do new settings. And we can go ahead and give it a new speed. So maybe 200 speed, right? Our power is, let's say 60 and our frequency is 75, all right? So let's just say that this is a great setting. We've got our hatch all set up the way we want and we, we don't wanna forget this, we wanna save it. So we're gonna hit okay and we can see that those changes have been reflected. We've covered this in the crash course already, guys, but we wanna save this to our library as a new setting. Let's say this works great on steel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the layer selected. We've got the black layer selected there and we're gonna click create new from layer. And that's gonna take whatever settings are applied to this color layer that we have selected and it's gonna create a new entry for us. You guys are gonna see some familiar menus here. So we'll go ahead and hit okay. And we can give it a material name. So this one would be steel. And we're not doing a thickness. So thickness is if you're trying to remember like what thickness material you're cutting, you could put three millimeters in for thickness and that will instead take the place of the title. So it would be steel, three millimeters, and then like, you know, cut. Uh, but we don't have a thickness, so we don't need to worry about that right now. So let's say this is steel, uh, we'll call it ablate and general, right? And this, we really like this setting, so we wanna save it, general. With that filled out, we can hit okay and it shows up in our library. Steel, ablate, general, perfect. If for some reason, let's say it was supposed to be 300 speed instead of 200, we don't wanna edit it up here and then create a whole new entry. That's more work than it's worth. So what we can do is we can actually come in here and do edit cut instead. And that's gonna pull up that cut window for us so that we can go ahead and change some of those parameters. So we can change 200 to 300 millimeters per second and hit okay. And now if we have this selected and we click this assign to layer button, it's gonna take whatever is stored in this parameter and apply it to the active layer. So we'll be able to see our change because we, we just changed this to 300 millimeters per second. So we'll go ahead and click the assign to layer button. And now we can see it's applied that new setting to our black layer. If we have a very similar setting where we're maybe using all the same hatch options and we just want a different line distance or a different speed or power, we can use the duplicate button to duplicate an entry. So if we hit duplicate here, it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna say steel, ablate, and then general copy. This we could say maybe white finish, right? White finish. Uh, and that'll give us our steel white finish and we can hit okay. And it's gonna have the same exact settings as our steel general. So don't forget, we have to now click it and we're gonna click edit cut. And then we can come in and make whatever changes we need to make. So we could call this 750, 40, and 45, right? Uh, and now with this, we can hit okay. And our steel white finish and our steel general are now two different settings. Again, we can test this with the assign to layer button. So if I do assign to layer on black with the white finish, you can see our new settings pop up there. And if we wanna switch back to general, we can click that and click assign to layer. And it goes back to the original setting we were trying to save. If you have a setting that's not working out like PMAG, uh, let's say this PMAG tan setting isn't working out, we're done with it. We don't want it anymore. We can just click the delete button and we will hit yes and it's deleted. So that's very easy as well, just getting rid of settings that we don't want in our library anymore. Finally, guys, when you have your library set up the way you want it to be set up, you have to remember to save your library. Lightburn right now does not automatically save your library. So you can either hit save to save over the original, or you can do save as, and you can give it a new one. So we could call this mark param corrected, and that'll save us again a CLB file. We can hit save. And now our library is marked param corrected. Whatever library we load in last for a particular device, so in this case we're on our JCZ Fiber 110, whatever library we've loaded in last is going to be the library that loads up next time. And uh, you know guys, I, I, I like to smash that save button a couple times whenever I make changes just to make sure that it's absolutely been saved. I can't tell you how many times I have forgotten to save and I will just close Lightburn after adding a bunch of new settings and then they're all gone. So make sure that you're saving it. There is one last thing I wanna show you guys before we end this episode today and that is for you Laser Master Academy members. So if we open our web browser and we go to masters.lasereverything.net, 
the LMA will load up here. If you guys don't know what the Laser Master Academy is, it's basically the supporter platform for the channel. So this is where everybody comes when they want to support the channel. It's eight bucks a month. You get a bunch of bonus goodies for signing up and it helps us to continue making these videos. Uh, if we check out the about section, we actually have, we're rapidly approaching 2000 members that uh, financially support the channel and make this show possible. So if you want to join them, you can head over to masters.lasereverything.net. That's not why we're here today. Uh, the reason we're here is because we want to download the parameter library we get for being a member of the Laser Master Academy. If we come to topics and we go to downloads, we'll see the latest Fiber Laser Parameter Library 2022 update. So we can go ahead and click that. And if we scroll down a little bit, we got a couple videos here, and I'm actually going to add this video as well to this list once it's complete. There's two downloads for us. Uh, download the latest version of the converter here in case you just need the converter, or you can download the parameter library with this link right here. So we're going to go ahead and click that, and it's going to download the parameter library for us. Same thing. We'd like to keep it on the desktop, so we're just going to do show and folder. We're going to cut that parameter library and paste it to the desktop so everything is nice and easy to find. And we can close all of this and we'll minimize light burn for now. And here is the parameter library. So if I right click and we do extract all, it's going to go ahead and extract that folder for us. Cause again, it's a compressed folder. So we absolutely have to extract it. And inside we can see a couple folders. So we've got a folder for EasyCAD 2. We've got a folder for EasyCAD 3 and we have a folder for Lightburn. So I've gone ahead and prepped the library for all three pieces of software for you. So these are ready to go. Uh, if we import the Lightburn one right away, straight into Lightburn, you guys are gonna notice that the settings may not work on your machine. And that's because this library was made for a 30 watt laser with a 110 lens. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and show you that real quick. We'll open up Lightburn and we'll just click load. And we're gonna come into our downloaded parameter library. We're going to click for light burn and load in the markparam.clb. And there it is, guys. There is the laser everything list of settings. There are quite a few uh, for you to mess with. Uh, there's just a ton of stuff in here. Uh, so we've been working on this for a long time, and, and we are really excited to be able to share this parameter library with you. But again, these are for a 30 watt laser with a 110 lens and maybe you don't have a 30 watt laser with a 110 lens well that is where our friend the laser parameter converter is going to come back in handy so just to keep things simple let's get rid of all these libraries we've created so far we don't need the zipped version of this anymore so uh, let's launch the laser params converter and in here we're going to be loading in a light burn file because again i provide the light burn file for you Max power of 100 is fine. We're using the fiber laser and we're going to select a file. So let's come in here and we're going to use for light burn and mark param.clb and hit open. And here we have our lens and wattage. So remember, this library was built for a 110 lens with a 30 watt laser. We want this to say work with a 60 watt laser and we have a 220 millimeter lens. So we'll just put those in the output and hit convert all. And funny enough, the settings for the 220 lens on the 60 watt laser, our, our beam size is about four times bigger over here on the 220, uh, but we have twice the wattage to work with. So the settings are ending up the same based on those calculations. So a better example might be a 300 millimeter lens and a 60 watt laser. We'll hit convert all. And once we hit convert all, you'll notice that the settings have actually changed. Now, since we're using such a big lens, the 300 millimeter lens, we're going to hit 100% power on a couple of our settings here, and it's actually going to change the speed value. So a thousand speed was okay with the 30 watt laser and the 110 lens, but the 300 lens over here is actually going to require us to go a bit slower in order to get a similar result. So you'll see we've maxed out our power and we've slowed our speed down quite a bit. And uh, that's not uncommon, especially especially when moving to either weaker lasers or larger lenses, you're gonna see uh, the power max out and then the speeds start to reduce in order to compensate. These aren't perfect conversions, they are fairly good. You're still gonna have to do some tinkering yourself, but it's a much better start than starting from absolute zero. Just like last time, we need to export this for light burns. We'll go ahead and click save parameter file and we're going to do a lightburn cut library it's lightburn.clb this time and we can go ahead and save that to the desktop so we'll hit save and okay and we can close that and open lightburn one more time we're going to hit load here 
We'll come back to the desktop. And there it is, the new library.clb with our converted parameters. And we'll hit open. And there's the brand new library right there for you guys. So uh, that's about it. So if you're an LMA member or you want to be an LMA member, that's how you load the library in. Great little starter set of parameters here to get you rolling, especially if you're starting from zero. Otherwise, the fiber laser parameter converter uh, software here does a great job converting your existing EasyCAD library to something that Lightburn can read. Uh, I've already gone in and done all the work of organizing these settings, so that's one less thing they have to worry about. But if you're importing your own EasyCAD library, it really doesn't take that long to clean the library up. So we've talked about how to convert your EasyCAD library to a Lightburn library. We've talked about how to organize that, and we've talked about how to bring in outside libraries, convert them for your lens and wattage, and then apply them to your laser library. One last time, guys, don't forget to smash that save button. And while you're at it, smash the like button, of course. And uh, that's it. That's what we've got to talk about today. Next episode, we'll be talking about how to add additional devices and how to run them at the same time. So if that's something that you're curious about doing, yes, Lightburn can absolutely run more than one laser at once. We're going to add a laser or two to our device list here and then we are going to run them at the same time. Uh, so keep an eye out for the next episode, but for now, that's all I've got, guys. Thanks so much for watching this episode of the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course, and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course. If you got value out of this one, don't forget to smash the like button, let everybody else know the content is good, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get notified the next time we add an episode to the Crash Course. If you need help with anything at all, there are links to our absolutely 100% free Discord and Facebook group down in the description, right next to the link to the Laser Master Academy, the number one way to support the channel. We absolutely love what we do here, guys, teaching you how to use your laser engraving machines, and we want to keep doing that. Every episode that we upload to the YouTube channel for everyone for free is thanks to our members over at the Laser Master Academy. If you want to sign up to support the channel, you can find out more over at masters.lasereverything.net. It starts at eight bucks a month. It comes with a bunch of bonus goodies for signing up and it's an awesome community over there. So I hope to see you over there soon. That's all I've got for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching again and I will see you in the next one.